Hey guys, what's up? Steph here, and I am excited to be bringing you guys episode number four of True Local TV. And today, as you can tell, I'm on the road and I'm somewhere new and with someone very special. So if you've not yet met him, this is the man, the myth, the legend, uh, <laughs> co-founder Mark of True Local. So, hello. Hello, how's it doing? Good. Thanks for having the trip out. It's good to see you guys. Good I know, to see you. we're talking so formally now, yeah, we talk on the phone like every single day, all the time. We're such like best buds. Like. <laughs> we're going to be a little more professional for this one. You know, got to uh, step our game up for all the people watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so just a reminder for anyone watching, we are going to be giving, as per usual, away two boxes, or two boxes of meat. Two. Two. Do it. So one on Facebook and one on Instagram. So if you guys are tuning in, please comment, say hi, and tell us where you're from. And just by doing that, you're going to be entered to win a free box of meat. I mean, pretty, not, boxes. pretty sweet and yeah, pretty okay. sweet boxes at yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so today, because uh, I've, I've got Mark with me, we are able to talk about some really cool stuff. Uh, so some of the topics we're going to talk about today are meat label claims. So a lot of that stuff that you see on packaging in the grocery store, in, mar in marketing, all these different things. We're going to dispel a myth, but before we get into that, uh, some very exciting news. This past week, you guys launched in a new province. Yes. You are in BC now, so tell we everyone about that. are in BC. So first <laughs> of all, all Canadians should be excited about that, but especially the people in BC. Um, we launched in BC on Thursday, and it's actually been a huge goal of ours. I think we made a post not too long ago talking about how this time last year, we were literally in a garage. So like literally working out of a garage, so to see now we got Alberta up and running and now we're in BC, which is one of the places that since day one, we know how much they're involved with the local community, how amazing the products are there, especially the seafood. Um, us getting up to BC is like a huge milestone for us and we've had an amazing response so far. So if you are in BC and you're thinking about giving us a shot, um, let us know because we'd love to kind of walk through and tell you more about the products. Um, but it's super exciting for us. Plus, like I love spending time in Vancouver. Like, <laughs> Who got, like, it was snowing here yesterday. Um, like, we've got like, what, how, how, how much is snow in Calgary? I think uh, like a 40 centimeters there, or something yeah. crazy. Yeah, so Vancouver, yeah. got it figured out. That's awesome. Yeah, love the West Coast. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the suppliers that you've got out there? Because you've got, you've got a lot already, we like, do. which is amazing. Yeah, so one of the exciting things, always kind of been like a content guy, like sort of a marketing guy, and always kind of like seeing behind the scenes and making videos. and. This is the first time we have all of our supplier videos in Ontario and we've done our supplier exposés uh, in Alberta. But the nice thing about this one is we actually got to film a bit of kind of like a launch story. As soon as we got out to Vancouver and BC, like we went there for maybe a month, you know, it doesn't do it any justice. You yeah. can spend a lifetime in BC and still not experience one a millionth of what it has Absolutely. to offer, right? So what we wanted to do though is while we were out there, we try to get as involved in the community as possible. We try to meet as many people as possible, talk to as many suppliers. I must have talked to at least 50 different farmers and we kind of settled on uh, four actually and we have some more coming out um, that really resonated with us and we actually uh, documented the whole thing. So it was a, a bit of a, a, a kind of like a, a great memory to, to look back on but also a good way to show people you know, what BC has to offer. So. Who we're dealing with right now, we've got, uh, we're dealing with Two Rivers, amazing, amazing, amazing butcher shop uh, in Vancouver. And these guys, uh, we're actually one of the first guys we reached out to. So they're doing, um, really primarily focused on the beef. We've got Hopcot Farms, which has to be one of the most, I guess, uh, I don't know if authentic, so I will be yeah. authentic, yeah. but just they literally raise the cows I would say a stone throw, like literally a stone throw. Take a football, I can't throw a football very far. You're hitting their actual shop where they sell the stuff. Oh, so amazing. Dealing with that, it's all on site, which is amazing. Um, so that's Hop Cop Farm Crest. Like, Farm Crest is, once again, one of the better stories we've seen, just based on the fact that they're the first uh, Canadian chicken producers in Canada ever to have a non uh, verified, uh, non GMO verified claim and actually go through the process. Amazing. It took them about three years to do that, and they, they grow all their own food. Um, I actually have a funny story about that after, but we should circle back on it. <laughs> like um, and then uh, we're dealing with uh, some guys called Ogopogo. So Ogopogo, I love this story, out near, um, um, out, uh, out in Okanagan, and they're doing all of our 100% grass-fed products. So we know that 100% grass-fed right now is one of the biggest trends. People are looking for that. Uh, people that are health conscious, looking for the omega-3s, looking for lower cholesterol. So they are actually a sausage shop to start off. So they do 100% grass-fed beef sausage. Um, and what we did is when we approached them, we're like, you know what, there's a big need for this. People in Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, all across BC yeah. are looking for this type of product. So we're actually doing a special program with them where we're going to be able to get all of our grass-fed products through them. And then um, one of the most iconic across all of our true local suppliers is organic ocean seafood. I couldn't be happier to be working with these guys. And one of the main reasons being is we've been everywhere, but this is the first time we actually got to go out 
on a fishing trip and catch the salmon for ourselves. So that was an amazing, amazing experience in itself alone. Yeah, I think that's so, so cool. And if you guys haven't checked out the video, I believe the video is on both their Facebook page and Instagram. It's a amazing video, really well done. You can see some of the contents on the suppliers there. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, sweet. So that video too is like a good launch, uh, sort of launch video that we had to give you a glimpse of what we have. But we also have the full supplier videos too. So if you want to learn more about the individual suppliers that um, you'd be ordering from, um, it's on our website. Full videos on all Perfect. of them. It's the full story. What more could you need? Good stuff. That's awesome. Um, so I figured we just dive right into the, the first topic, but actually before I do that, if anyone just tuned in to remind you guys, we're giving away free boxes of meat. So whether you're on Facebook or you're on Instagram, write a little comment, give us a little wave, tell us where you're from, and you'll be entered to win, and we'll give it away at the end of today's episode. We love meat jokes too. Like, you know, we have, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, so you if you guys have meat, meat jokes, jokes <laughs> or meat puns, please, well, we actually have a bunch written down. So at uh, any point in time, if you got something we should add to the board, let us know. I like love good meat puns. Yes, really meat funny. puns work really well. <laughs> um, okay, so... <clears throat> Label claims in food in general, the food industry in general is a really big thing and we, we kind of touched on this a little bit in episode number one, but now that I've got you here, I think this is the perfect time to really talk about the label claims that we see predominantly in the meat industry because there are a lot of them and they are also very confusing. So I'll start with one of the biggest ones, right. we've kind of already touched on it, and that is this concept of like grass fed. Yes, okay, that's a great one to start with. So as a little backstory on this, um, True Local, we, we've been around for about two and a half years now and I spent four years working in the meat space before this. And one of the biggest things is that we've kind of always come out trying to be as transparent as possible. And we were one of the early ones to actually showcase who our suppliers are. A lot of people in the space back in the day, you're seeing it more commonly now, but back in the day, didn't really want to showcase their suppliers in case um, people would just go directly there or people would, or competitors would go work with them or whatever it is. But our biggest thing was that we wanted to make sure that from day one, people saw that we were transparent. And I always love saying this, and if you guys are ever questioning it, just scroll back through our social media. Um, go back and look, because it was in the early days that we used to talk about, these are the proper way to describe the claims. Here's the transparency. No, we don't have this, but we have this. Or, you know what, we don't have that. There's another alternative you can go check out. Now we actually do have it all. It's nice to say that yep. two and a half years later. We've got something for absolutely everybody. Um, but that's one of the things I was kind of like starting with. So for grass fed, I, this is a hot topic everywhere, not just in the meat space, yep. but I'd say for the past couple of years, there's been this really big movement towards switching over to grass fed beef, which is awesome. Um, some of the benefits of grass fed beef, I'm gonna let you quickly touch yeah, on Yeah, I mean, we quick. touched on them a little bit in the previous episode, so you can go catch that too, but it's really the idea predominantly of the omega, omega um, fatty acid profile. And when it's grass fed, you're gonna get a higher omega-3 uh, fatty acid profile, which is less inflammatory, which, which is one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. Exactly, so one of the biggest things with that is that when grass fed started coming out, people immediately started going and being like, I wanna switch over to grass fed for the obvious health benefits. So it's funny because grass fed products, 100% grass fed products are not easy to find. And it was funny because every time we would start off in the early days, we'd be doing trade shows or just dealing with customer requests and they'd say, oh, well, I'm already getting grass fed products. So we started looking into it and just kind of realized that, you know, typical of the meat claim or just the claim industry in general, there's a lot of misconceptions. So if you guys are looking for the health benefits, if you guys are looking for um, what I would assume most people are mm -hmm. looking for when they're looking for grass fed product, you have to have to have to be sure to make sure it's grass fed and grass finished. If you go somewhere and ask for a grass fed product, it is not guaranteeing that that product is actually grass fed and grass finished its entire life. If that animal has spent any time living on a pasture, uh, any time whatsoever, so that means it could have been raised on a pasture and then gone to a food, uh, feedlot and mm -hmm. gone somewhere else, they can call it grass fed. Yeah. And I see it all the time um, where people are shopping, like, well, I'm already getting grass fed, and we're like, okay, cool, can we you know, look into where you're getting it? And that tends to be the case. So just for your guys' own knowledge, whether it be with us or anywhere else, make sure that if you are looking for grass fed, uh, grass -fed product, you are asking for either 100% grass fed or a grass fed, grass finished product. So, so that's one of the biggest things. If it's not grass finished, then what would the alternative be? Right, so grass, if it's not grass finished, so once again, the biggest thing is that grass fed, grass finished is great for a certain type of lifestyle. But there's another type of lifestyle, maybe they aren't as health conscious, not in a bad way, you know, maybe they're just already healthy, they're not watching their cholesterol as much, they just want to indulge. I would argue that when you talk about quality, like real quality beef, you're not talking about grass fed, grass finished. 
You're talking about more marbling. You want that AAA. When you're talking about like a, a, the cooking, culinary, yeah, exactly. taste experience. Chefs yeah. will tend to, to cook with this type of stuff. So if you go to fancy restaurants, they're more likely than not unless specified talking about a AAA type product. And ironically, five years ago, that's all anybody cared about. I remember yeah. when I was in the space, nobody talked about grass fed, nobody talked about antibiotics, hormones, organic, anything. It was as long as it's AAA. So what that is, is you'll usually see people talk about a grass fed corn finished or it could be a grass fed grain finished, it could be a grain fed, a corn fed, it doesn't matter, but you'll get that corn or grain sort of comment in there. And what they do that for is to fatten up the animal a little bit as much, right? So I wanna be very clear on this too. Just because it has corn in its diet does not make it a bad product. It doesn't mean it's coming from a factory farm. Once again, with what True Local is all about, it's all just about knowing where it comes from. Um, there are a lot of really good farmers, small scale farmers that are focusing more on the AAA side of things that are, are, are giving out amazing products. Yep. So the beautiful thing about True Local and one of the things I think really set, sets us apart is that we're not pushing any one particular product, right? It's not like we're, okay, we only are able to get, mm -hmm. you know, a corn finished product, so this is why it's better. We give you guys all the information that you're gonna want, you can make your decision for yourself. If you are looking for, uh, if, you're, if you're health conscious, you're looking to watch your cholesterol, if you're looking to get on some sort of diet, guess what, we've got 100% grass fed, grass finished product that you can go, you can see exactly where it's coming from. But if you want something that maybe uh, traditionally tastes a little bit better, it's a little bit more tender, a little bit more marbled, we've got that as well. And you can see the stark differences between both of them. You can order them side by side to find out. And you can always ask us too, if you ever have a question, like, you know, this is what I'm looking for, what would be better? Should I try this or should I try that? Absolutely, I think, I think when it comes to stuff, it's important to recognize that there's different strokes for different folks yeah. and there's not one particular right way or wrong way to do it. You wanna find what works for you. And as you guys are being so transparent with all this information, then the consumer can actually pick what works best for them exactly. and what they actually want, which is really, really awesome. So I guess the takeaway is if you want completely grass fed, you better look for that grass finish or that 100% to ensure yeah, that it is. Yeah, that's exactly this. So the biggest takeaway tip from here is just if you are looking for the grass fed product and once again, in your head, you were thinking about a grass fed, you're thinking about a cow out in the meadow, <laughs> you know, everybody's always got the image yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that you are asking, is this grass fed, grass finished? Look at that butcher in the eye. Look at those, look at that. If it's a website, go and read through the details yeah. and see, you know, is this grass fed grass finish? You know, yeah. make sure that you're getting that. And they'll always tell you, when you ask them, they'll always tell you, like if it's, hey, you know what, this is a grass fed corn finish. Just make sure you get that information. So 100% grass fed or grass fed grass finish is what you're probably looking for in that case. Awesome, love it. Uh, the next thing, and you kind of just touched on it lightly, is antibiotics. So we yes. see this a lot on yes. labels. Antibiotics, okay, this is a, I love this one. This is, actually, <laughs> this is this the one that's got, fun. there's a lot of shadows <laughs> around this one. So. Antibiotics, so one of the nice things is that we work really closely with the CFIA, um, so the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, to make sure that everything that we're saying is accurate. And you're gonna start seeing a lot more of it now because I would say that meat's kind of been the wild, wild west for the past long while. Um, there are very, very, very cut and dry, this is, this is, like, I, I'm not saying to code, but this is, um, that's what I'm looking for here. Uh, like, not to code, but it's like, this standard is, or? yeah, this is the standard, sorry, standard. Yep. this is the standard or this is not. So one of the biggest things is I wanna talk about what people think about when they're asking for antibiotic free or antibiotics. For the most part, if you're asking for an antibiotic free product, your head is going towards an animal that has never been given any antibiotics ever in its life. And for the most part, antibiotic free is not that. So you'll also hear, uh, you'll also hear a lot of people say that all meat in Canada is antibiotic free. That is also the case. And I want to shed the light on this so you guys get it. So make sure you're like keeping this clip, keep the segment, there'll be a lot of information. <laughs> and there's a third part of this about what just changed. See if I just made a change actually to what it's going to be overall. So all meat in Canada is antibiotic free. And the reason that is the case is because meat has to go through a withdrawal period um, before it's been cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's why everywhere you go, Every, tell me right now if you bought a cut of meat that didn't say it was antibiotic free. Right. Especially everywhere yeah. you go to default now. My, my biggest argument is that no added hormones, antibiotic free. These are these are you know pre these are standards. These are like what people these people yeah. demand. So the reason being is because once again, all meat in Canada is antibiotic free. It's all gone through this withdrawal period. The problem is though, consumers don't know that, and what they're asking for when they ask for antibiotic free is not the withdrawal period. They don't wanna hear about that. They wanna hear that the animal has never been yep. given antibiotics ever in its life. And there's a key word you can use for that, very similar to the grass or grass finish. It's called raised without antibiotics. That is a CFIA claim, RWA. That is what you are looking for. 
Once again, not right or not wrong, but that is the facts behind it. If you are looking for an animal that has never been given any antibiotics, you are looking for raised without antibiotics. Yeah. I think too, I guess it was in episode two when we were at the farm, you were there with Lori in the chicken yep. farm and she also touched on this so you can go back and look at that. I think what's really cool in this day and age of the internet and Netflix and all this stuff, you can find so much great informative content online. Uh, but I think it's also important to remember sometimes that what we our regulations in Canada are very different from the U.S. That's a really good point so too. Actually, I where you're getting too. your information, if it's a very U.S. Um, directed yeah. content, I think it's important to recognize, recognize sure. that. Farming standards here in the U.S. are completely different. So if you're reading a U.S. article or you're, I always love it on those, you know, so you know the buyer websites they just produce content nonstop. Yeah. A lot of this stuff comes out of the states, and there are a lot of different or the regulations. Food documentaries as well. Exactly. Yeah, this is the food documentaries stuff, yeah. are always good ones. Um, but one thing I want to touch on the antibiotics, so things just recently changed. So the CFA isn't very cool with the whole concept of people marketing antibiotic free for the withdrawal period. Here's the fact. So when you do testing results on an antibiotic free product, so a product has been given antibiotics, however, throughout the course of its life, it's been weaned off of it. It's not actually that's antibiotic free. It just, the reason people can say that is because it's within a detectable limit. And you're only testing for a certain detectable limit. Yep. And what the CFI is now saying is that because there's actually still trace amounts of antibiotic in there, antibiotic free is no longer a thing. It's no longer going to be a thing because all, all of it that's been given has residues in it. So there's a big change coming around. And we're really excited to be able to have work with them on this because we're actually on the front line of now hearing about the new standards and seeing how much they're trying to really get away from everybody using this term or everybody using that term. So make sure to keep your eyes out. If you guys are looking for antibiotic products, once again, it's such easy, antibiotic free, so easy to yeah, say. Yeah, so it rolls so off the tongue. Antibiotic free. <laughs> so if you guys are looking for a product that has not been given antibiotics, make sure you're looking for the um, raised without antibiotics. Raised without, so it's and kind of like the grass fed, right? Like is. wording is really, really important, right? Yeah, um, so, so yeah, and just one of the things too, this is kind of one of those things that's like a lot of information for you guys. Here's something a little bit more exciting, giveaway. Oh. Does it has up, do I have some new, I mean, new, make some new people? If they didn't remind them. Uh, okay, if you guys just tuned in, I'm here with Mark, and I just want to remind you guys that if you just tuned in, we are giving away two boxes of meat today. So one on Facebook, one on Instagram. Just comment, say hi, tell us where you're from, give us a meat joke or a meat pun. Mark likes those too, so we'll give those away at the end of today's episode. Uh, so we, if you just joined us, we've touched a bit on grass-fed, we touched a bit on antibiotics, yeah. uh, and then you also alluded to this is... Get, get a little like deeper in the mud here is hormones. 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 <laughs> Equally as exciting as yes. antibiotics. People love so talking hormone about hormone free, so. all of these different things. Yeah, so hormones is one of the biggest ones and I, I always look at it like this, like you're always gonna see, uh, people have done, done the research on what they can and can't say and you'll know right off the bat by how they list their claims. Because if you see them written in a certain way, you'll know, okay, you know, maybe dog this, dog that. So one of the biggest ones is hormones, okay? So I'm gonna need some help from the producers here, because remember there's a couple of producers, aka our customer <laughs> service staff. Um, so there's a couple of talks that I know they wanted me to touch on, so I'm gonna to try to do my best to hit all of them, but one of the biggest ones is the idea of uh, no added hormones versus no hormones. Yeah. Okay, so the proper term is no added hormones. You can't say that there are no hormones in this animal because all living beings. We're living creatures. We have hormones. We have it's hormones. a thing. It's they have hormones. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> can't get rid of them. Teenager, trust me, you know all about them. <laughs> so you can't get away from it. There's nothing you can do. You can't say no hormones. Do not, like, you can't say no hormones. You have to say no added hormones, which makes sense because what people yeah. want to know is has this thing been given tons of steroids? To Absolutely. Them, right? Yeah. So that's one of the biggest things uh, to, to make sure to look at for. If you see a place saying no hormones, always kind of, you know, it's always kind of like, okay, well, can, can we dive in a little deeper, understand how you're saying that, yeah. and see what you might find out? Another huge one, I'm going to save you guys tons of money here, and tons of trouble, and tons of running around, <laughs> and tons of headaches. So we get asked all the time. Um, one of the nice things that we do, like I said, is that we don't offer one single product from one single farmer. We offer multiple products from different farms yep. that specialize in different things. The one thing they have in common is they're all local to your province. So once again, if you're in Ontario, you're getting Ontario farms. Uh, if you're in Alberta, you're getting Alberta farms. If you're in BC, you're getting BC farmers. Um, but one of the nice things is that each single supplier and product has its own description. So you'll be able to read up on it to see. If you're looking for something that's, you know, never been given anything ever, we've got a lot of that. We've built this entire, uh, this entire business on finding those best products. If you want um, something that's, uh, like I said, we're talking about the grass-fed and the AAA, we've mm -hmm. got that as well. So one of the biggest questions we get all the time is people going through our descriptions and seeing uh, the chicken. 
and they'll be like, well, you talk about how it's RWA or you talk about how whatever, but you don't mention hormones. That means you guys must be pumping these animals with hormones. Okay, that's not the case. What we were trying to do is actually be even more transparent about it. No chicken in Canada, and this goes the same for pork, can be given any added hormones. It's illegal. This is a big win for Canada, by the way. So it is illegal. There is not one. It doesn't matter if you're buying at the most low-end grocery store or the most, you know, two hundred dollars a pound chicken that's been raised. You know, one chicken on a farm. Yep. This guy goes to bed. Gets the entire pasture, everything. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't story. matter. Yeah. <laughs> there are no added hormones in that chicken. Period. That's why we don't mention it. So we don't want to mislead you guys. And you'll go to a lot of places and you'll see that there'll be chicken that's priced one way. And chicken right beside it that says oh well this is no added hormone chicken and they raise the price right so that it happens it's unfortunate it happens so yeah. once again once again this is something to take notes on when you guys are shopping make sure you look around to see okay I, I, if you're mentioning hormones when it comes to um uh pork or chicken there's just no point there's not a point to have to mention it all of it is no added hormones yeah so that's some of the biggest uh the biggest topics when it comes to hormones. yeah so these are all like really like buzzwords but the more you can actually get the facts you'll be able to decode these things in the stores and online or wherever you're looking for it yeah like circling back to it like we've always said this since day one you know our biggest thing is just we just want to connect you to the source you know our tagline is all about it our entire business is built on it and as we evolve and try to become you know the, the best company ever at connecting to the source giving you that full story that to me is what matters more than anything else and i think that that's kind of where people are going yeah. Um, back in the day, I would say that, you know, organic was the biggest claim. Yeah. Then it became natural. That got squashed really quick because that's a very difficult term. Um, see if I wasn't happy about that one. Um, way back in the day, and we kind of, we never, actually, I don't think we existed then at that time. <laughs> and when we came in, it was the whole no out of the hormones, antibiotics, yeah. that was a big thing. But now, it's a lot more of a transition, uh, it's, it's transitioning to transparency. Yeah. I can tell you right now, um, uh, me personally, I would much rather, if you show me, let's say we use Lori from Henry's. Like she's yeah, amazing. she's, she's amazing. Best. Hey, Lori, I bet she's watching too. Exactly. <laughs> so she's amazing. The best product, we've uh, one, one of the best products that we've, we've ever dealt with. Love her. She's amazing. Um, we've been dealing with her for about a year now. And, uh, but she doesn't have any certifications. No certifications there. Yeah. Right? I would say that 10 times out of 10, if you ask me if I wanted to purchase uh, chicken breast from Lori versus an organic certified product, I'm taking it from Lori. Yeah. Because I know how it's been raised, I know where it's coming from, I see the basis behind it, and that's the biggest thing that we try to push. And hopefully, you guys resonate with that. It's all about transparency. We just want to give you guys sort of that ability to choose. You can choose what you want and what matters most to you. I, so. I think one of the things too, when it comes to farming, that a lot of people sometimes forget if you didn't grow up near farms or in farming uh, communities or families or whatever it might be, is that it's so nuanced and it depends so much on the farm and the farmer and their beliefs and their practices. But what's really cool about what you guys do is like your boots on the ground you go to these farms you talk to these farmers so you've really done a lot of the homework the legwork the research for consumers which is amazing we've, we've been there and you know what like we we like to think that we're relatively quick and you know we take the feedback that we get and that's exactly what it was because back in the day it was all about the claims like back yep. in the day when we started off and we had a few products it was literally all about the claims like all we cared about was well you have to have this and you can't have yep. that and and we just listen to our customers and like i think that's why we've been able like you know our customers are the reason we've been able to do this in ontario and in alberta and i feel like bc really needs something like this as well and now we're obviously out out in, in british columbia and you know we just listen to what what they're asking for yeah. and they're able to give it to them love it or try to, at least. love it okay so before we go into the last one which i'm actually very excited about is if you just joined friendly little reminder we're doing a giveaway on instagram and on facebook so just comment tell us where you're from give us a wave give me a meat joke tell me something funny and you'll be entered to win. That's all you gotta do. It's crazy because like we never need like, like we never get no feedback, so we never know. Like we're I'm like, essentially are you guys talking like somebody there, comment. like what's going on? Yeah, we never know. So. Maybe it's just me. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah, maybe. Like, who knows? Maybe it is. <laughs> um, okay, so the last thing that I wanted to bring up is kind of like the seafood industry uh, and wild caught. Okay, wild caught. This is tell good. us. I, like, actually, I feel like I said this to, for every single topic, but okay, they're all exciting to me. I like all these things. <laughs> so wild caught fish. So once again, I've God, it gives us. We have we have amazing, 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 amazing fish guys here in Ontario. Like, there's no offense about to be able to call this catch here. And obviously, being in Ontario, though, we're very limited in what we can get locally, we're a little right? Bit Just yeah. a little bit. So when we got to go out to BC, we reached out to the guys at Organic Ocean, um, and absolutely blew our minds. So like I said, we've been to every single farm, every single farm we're dealing with. We have been to, we've seen it, we've tried to shoot videos there, we've done all of it. Um, so we vetted all these people to make sure, but the one thing we've never really had access to was the fish. So 
we always knew we've always been dealing with only wild caught. So we deal with strictly wild caught. It's exclusively wild caught product. A lot of it is uh, MSC certified. So that means that it's sustainable. It's caught on a hook and line. And we did as much research as we could. We do research a lot of this stuff. Like we are, we yeah. know what's going on in the space. And we, we learned to put the hook, the hook in line and we learned that it's better than net fishing, but we've yeah. never seen it ourselves. So finally, once again, like big thank you to British Columbia. Uh -huh. It's amazing. The experience is amazing. We got to go out there and the organic ocean guys were like, you know, you need to come on a, on a trip with us, on a fishing trip with us. And it just so happened that while we were out there, we were out there for about a month. And while we were out there, it was one of their last uh, salmon runs of the season. And they're like, get on the boat, we're going. Which is a funny story because we actually thought it was gonna be from like 6 a.m. to like noon. Well, it would end up being like 6 to 6. Didn't really realize that, so long day. But uh, I know a lot. Well, once again, I'm no fisherman, but in terms of <laughs> being yet. running a business like this, yeah, I know a lot about it now, and it's amazing. Like, we literally, so like, there's two of us, and we literally like, were pulling salmon out of, of the water. It was amazing. So, we, uh, we deal with hook and line products. We always recommend hook and line, it's uh, way more sustainable. Um, you're only catching animals you want to catch. If there is anything that gets caught, you toss it right back in. Um, it is a it is a hook and line, and people are pulling this out of the water. It is a man project. There's about three people on a boat, and they're just pulling the stuff in. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So they have about, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, but maybe like 40 or 50 hooks. I'm sorry if I completely messed this up, but 40 or 50 hooks in the water, yeah. and they're just pulling them up and getting them off. So it's amazing. So. The biggest thing to look out for when it comes to wild caught, and so I know a little bit more about it, is that when you're dealing with wild caught, which most people are looking for for all the reasons that we just described, um, a good chunk of it is uh, a lot of it goes through China. So if you're dealing with frozen wild caught products, yeah. a good chunk of it is going through China, and you'll actually, it's pretty easy to tell, you can actually flip the back of one of the trays, and you'll see, you know, it could say XYZ wild caught from somewhere locally, like, you know, yeah. anywhere, and you flip the back, it says product from China. So that's one of the biggest things to look out for when it comes to dealing with wild caught fish. Just so make sure you're looking for that. Um, our, uh, well, it's actually pretty straightforward. Our, uh, our fish in Ontario, our wild caught's coming wild caught from Alaska. And obviously in Vancouver, BC, it's coming from, <laughs> from Vancouver, where I think our trip was about two hours out. It's coming from the Adams River. Um, amazing, so cool. amazing products. So those are, that's the one thing to watch out for with wild caught. And I've got to give this a shout out. So all of our products um, are wild caught. They're 100% wild caught products. However, there's been a big push, and we've always been very against uh, the idea of farm fish. So it's funny because in the past couple of years in starting, we've had so many people that are respected in the fish space come to us and say, hey, you know what, like, farm fish isn't what it used to be. There's an opportunity here. And we shot it down, shot it down, shot it down. And it wasn't until we met our guys out in BC that actually opened our eyes. These guys, like, they're, the, everything they do is all about sustainability. And it opened my eyes on, on the farm fish thing, in, industry, and the problem is that it's the same like regular farms. Yeah. So there are people that are mass producing these fish in horrible environments, but there are also people doing it well. Really cool. And there are people doing it with um, aquaponics, people that are doing it where it's fully self-sustaining. Literally the entire thing is enclosed and they're being raised properly. So we're not offering any of those products yet. We still have a lot of research to do ourselves um, before we decide that that's the road that we want to check out. But uh, over the next year, we're going to research it. We're going to make a couple trips, hopefully do a couple videos, educate ourselves on is this the real deal yeah. or is it not? And then also educate you guys. And if you know we think it's something that's legit or you guys want to see or get more information, maybe we'll start offering it. Yeah, I think that's really cool about the company and what you guys do is you're so open to consumer feedback. So like, guys, yeah, if you're on there feedback. and you want something and you've never shared it with us, let us know. Um, so cool, thank you for that. And I will back the fact that he was on a boat catching fish. Crazy. He sent me a text message right. photo and I was very jealous. <laughs> I really wanted to be out there. Um, I'm also not the fishing type. So like a lot of people when I put them I was on a boat did not really believe me. Like, <laughs> That's now, great. Flip them I, love, I love it. Take your badge. Um, so if you just joined us, we're gonna wrap this up soon. So make sure that you uh, comment, say hi, tell us where you're from, give us a little wave because we're gonna give away two boxes of meat on Instagram and on Facebook in the next few minutes. Two boxes. Uh, okay, the last thing to kind of wrap this up, uh, I want to tackle the idea or the myth, or we're going to find out if it's a myth, the idea that eating high quality meat needs to be expensive. Right, 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 right. Okay, the idea that high quality meat has to be expensive. Um, yeah, it's obviously a pretty standard one. You'd always think that the better quality, the more expensive. And you know what? That's it's definitely that's the truth. So at the end of the day, when it comes to buying meat, meat was not supposed to be cheap. Okay, so let's just take a couple steps back, yeah. a few years back. If you think about trying to raise a cow, and it takes two years, 24 months to properly raise a cow, and that cow gives you, I don't know, 30 New York strip steaks, 
Well, we live in a world right now where people want to eat steak every single day and people want literally hundreds of millions of pounds of steak. So what happened is due to human consumption, it's 100% our fault, due to human consumption, we have found a way to drive the price of meat down. And the problem with that is that ground beef wasn't supposed to be $2.99 a pound. Okay, so people always think that because our focus uh, is meat, and we always say that, you know, at the end of the day, we're not a meat company. Meat is a product that we're doing right now, but our biggest thing is trying to connect people directly to the background, to the background story. So we're, we're okay with saying this. I don't think people should eat more meat. I'm definitely not an advocate for eating more meat. I think what people should do is eat less meat, but the meat they do buy should be better quality. So we always say that if you're on a if you're on a tighter budget, it doesn't mean that you can't get better quality meat. It just means instead of getting maybe five pounds of meat per week, you get three, and you actually get better quality product, right? Instead of eating three steaks a week, maybe have a little bit of ground beef, maybe have um, uh, your, 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 some chickpeas or some lentils or something yeah, else, 100%. and then when you do, to and your gets, point, when you want that meat, go for the high quality, yeah. make the investment because you are essentially taken over here, but you're making an investment in your health, right? You are, and meat, I would argue, and you know this, like, as, as nutritionists, meat has got to be one of the biggest, uh, I guess, contrasts from pole to pole between top Absolutely. quality meat yep. and the quickest meat you can get. The spectrum is yeah, very it's wide. It's very big, it's very, very wide. big. So yeah. I think that, you know, if anybody's already shopping with us, um, thank you. Um, <laughs> if everybody's already given us a shot, I would definitely say that people have seen the difference and you notice the difference. And if you haven't, you know, give it a shot, you know, try it out. And whether it be with us or not, it doesn't matter. If you've got a farm down the road, go to the farm down the road. If you've got a butcher shop down the road that you love and that you trust, go to that butcher shop, but just see the difference. Just try it for yourself. I think if a lot of people were just to spend a little bit more on the meat that they're getting, but eat less of it, it would yep. actually solve a lot more problems than just, you know, what's right in front of us right now. So. Totally, totally. I think uh, I think that was perfect. I think that hit the nail on the head. Cool. Love it. Nice, all the um, okay, I, I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think it's giveaway time. So I'm gonna go to producers here. What do we got? Okay, on Facebook, Teresa Linda, Congratulations, you just want a box of meat, so just send us a message and we'll get it sent right out to you. And then on Instagram, oh man, okay, THLP Design? Congrats, <laughs> you just won. So just send us a little little DM on Instagram and we'll get that sent right out to you. So thank you so much. I think I learned a lot. I always learn a lot when I talk to you guys. I hope you guys learned a lot. And as per usual, stay tuned for the next episode. Who knows? Who knows where we'll be or what we'll be talking about. Cool. Take care, guys. Have a good one.